the laughing cavalier here presenting to you another tale of these troubled times and it's another unscripted video with a few notes so there's been some news recently regarding upcoming tudor dramas this year and uh, i was thinking of holding off on talking about it but um, i put a poll up on the um, community posted on it and i think it was something like 70 percent of you said uh, no do one a video on it now so i will because we seem to have ended another period of just yearly tudor dramas again because i mean for, like for a while like it just seemed to sort of die off after the Tudors a bit. And then, then suddenly now we've had a lot more evidence of the Philip Gregory ones. And um, yeah, now we've got two <laughs> coming up within a year or two. One being Becoming Elizabeth, which I um, is now started a film, which I'll get onto in a moment. And the other one is the Anne Boleyn drama, which um, I didn't want to talk about because it sounds like an absolute trash fire. <sighs> but um, I know that's a bit of a meme to say, you know, I... You know, some sad piano music, and I go, I didn't want to make this video, but... <laughs> we'll see if, um... I'm mainly going to be talking about Becoming Elizabeth first, and then I, if I get time, I'll talk about the Anne Boleyn drama, and I'll, I'll put a timestamp up at this point, so you can skip to that if you want to go to that one. First of all, though, Becoming Elizabeth. And I'm glad I waited actually a day or two before I recorded this one, because uh, literally today we got some a load of behind-the-scenes photographs got released. Um, but first of all, I'll just go over what minute. So if... Rewind it last year, end of last year. Was it last year? No, hang on. No, I forgot we're in 2021 now. Yes, end of 2019. They announced, Stars Media announced they're going to do a drama called Becoming Elizabeth about the early reign of Elizabeth. The, no, not early reign, big pardon. Sorry, the before she becomes queen. So about 1547, presumably up until um, the death of Mary the First. But we'll find out when it's uh, when it's done. Um, and then it went quiet for a, nearly a year. Allegedly, I think they went to start filming in June of last year, 2020. Then a certain thing happened that you might have heard of, <laughs> and that got completely postponed. Um, but now they have actually started filming it, but they've been quite coy about releasing details. So far, the only casting we know is an actor called Alicia von Rittberg, who I've never heard of before this announcement. She's a German actress. is playing Elizabeth I. Or, well, the Lady Elizabeth at that point, obviously, because before she's queen. And somebody informed me the other day, Jessica Rain has been cast as Catherine Parr, which is interesting. Now, Jessica Rain, um, she's been in a few things, but um, she did drama later. She was in Wolf Hall. She was Jane um, Rochford. So, and um, yes, um, I'll get on to the, what I think of that casting in a moment, because there's a couple more possible ones, but we're not sure of. Uh, apparently, an actress called Ramola Garay, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, has been cast, but we don't know the role. Um, I've heard theories it's possibly Mary the First, and um, I'll pop a picture of her on screen. I'm thinking, yeah, probably probably Mary is what I'm thinking. And then there's some... I'll get onto the pictures uh, in a moment that got leaked, but there's one... Where is I saved them somewhere. There's one here, when it loads. Ah, here we go. Uh, how do I zoom... Oh, there's a stupid Windows 10 thing. There we are. All right, this is the one. Um, there's an actress here in a kind of... What do we call that colour? Dark red, I guess? Um dress um we can't see the lower half of her face because she's wearing a mask because again the event you might have heard of <laughs> i again correct me if i'm wrong in this she looks a lot like bella ramsey now if you don't know she was in game of thrones she played lyanna mormont in i think season six onwards um again i could i, I retract if i've got this completely wrong but she looks a lot like her <laughs> so if that is bella ramsey and she is 17 i think i look so she's about the right age i think possibly for lady jane gray I could be completely wrong on that. This is just this is pure theory, <laughs> but yeah. So that's a possible. Um, and there's a few more um, people pictured that I think look familiar, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Um, but we'll we'll soon hear more. I think. Yeah. So that's all we know about casting at the moment. Now, so I'll just do the two confirmed casting choices we know. So uh, for the moment, so Alicia von Rittberg, as I said, I don't know. I've not seen her much. I think she's been more in German. Um, television productions. Uh, the only English language I can think of apparently was in Fury, which I've not seen. <laughs> That's the one with Brad Pitt as a tank commander. At first, I was actually very sceptical when she's cast, because I think she's in her late 20s, and she's meant to be Elizabeth when she's a teenager, which is a bit, uh, perhaps a bit too old. But then again, the problem is she might be playing Elizabeth right up till her accession, which when Elizabeth is in her 20s. And initially looking at her, I was a bit sceptical, but some of these um, screenshots here, her hair colour looks like... Like she dyed her hair sort of reddish, which looks very similar to how Elizabeth I was. So yeah, I think I'm starting to think maybe she might be all right. You know, maybe it maybe my mind is changing. I'm uh, please be good. <laughs> I need something at least semi decent. So we'll see on that one. 
Uh, I haven't, there's not, I haven't seen any pictures of Jessica Rain in this one. Uh, possibly this might be after uh, Catherine Parr's died, so I don't know. But um, again, I think, yeah, she could be a decent Catherine Parr. I think she, if you look at some of the portraits we have of Catherine Parr, there's one in 1540s was done, one of the few actual contemporary ones we have. I mean, she looks fairly close. I, I think maybe her hair colour's a bit darker than, than Catherine's, but other than that, like, yeah. And she's a good actress. She could be a good Catherine Parr. Again, I can't comment on Romola Garan. Again, I, I assume she's going to be Mary, but we don't know. And if if that is Bella Ramsey, uh, well, she's 17. That's uh, about the right age for Jane. I mean, Jane's siblings t- kind of had light reddish hair, from what we know. But the problem is we don't really have any proper portraits of Jane's. There is, there is one, the Streatham portrait, I think, that got found about 10 years ago. But it's not an actual... It's a copy of what was believed to be an original, but it's it's a bit shaky, the provenance. Of the image, it could just be you know there wasn't any done of her in her time, so they just sort of made it up after the fact. Uh, other than that, though, like if if that if that is Bella Ramsey, if she's going to be cast as Lady Jane Grey, could be good. So we're not doing too bad thus far, but we've still got a lot of roles we don't know that could be could be bad. Authenticity actually looks better than I was, um, you know, I thought it was going to be. Uh, so again, most of this was published in an article in the Daily Mail um, by. And the photographer's guy called Jason Bryant, and I looked up his Instagram, and he's posted a couple other pictures on there, which I'll put on screen in a moment. Yeah, and I, I think they, the authenticity actually looks pretty decent. Um, probably if you hear a lot of clicking, I'm just going to the um, to the pictures. Um, it's a lot of severed heads, so <laughs> I guess it'd be Wyatt's Rebellion, so I'm sure we're going up to that sort of time period at least. Because um, they've mainly been filming in Wells and Somerset, not the one in Norfolk, because I get, I get I'm from Norfolk, so I get muddled with the one up there. But there's no, Wells and Somerset, and also in Bristol. But costumes, I'm thinking they look quite good. There's a lot of French hoods there. I think some of them are a little, um, not quite right. Looking at them, but you know, I'm at least like, well, at least I've got hoods. That's, <laughs> that's better than you know, Spanish princess and the other Philip Gregory ones we've had of late. And I'm glad we can actually just have something where I can talk about, you know, where it's like at least they somewhat tried. So, hey, might be good. Um, some carriages. Uh, one of them, there's another Instagram picture I found, and it's got the Royal Coat of Arms on the back. So that's good. Um, yeah, I think it's looking pretty decent. And there's there's one, one extra who appears I could be wrong. Where is he? There he is. Could be wearing the Order of the Golden Fleece, but then again, they might just be reusing something. I don't know. It looks... I can't quite see, because, again, there's very low resolution. So maybe that's a Spanish um, person? I don't know. I'm really, again, I'm going to be clutching at straws at this point, because we haven't got much info. But yeah, actually, I'm glad, so I'm glad I waited a few um, a day or two. So, yeah, overall, I think actually becoming Elizabeth might... I think we're now going to worry about the plot, though. They're still... If you go back to the video I did last year, they say they're going to look at all the sexual exploits of the court, which is very much worrying me. Um, particularly the Seymour affair with you know Tom Seymour and Elizabeth. I am dreading how that's going to be portrayed. But, you know, fingers crossed, maybe it might be slightly more authentic than Spanish Princess. It is a different writing team. Um, you know, it still starts really defunding it, so which is worrying. But, yeah, um, now we'll go on to the one that I'm less confident about, which is um, the, at the moment, unnamed uh, Anne Boleyn miniseries that Channel 5 is doing. Now, some of you may have heard of this. They've cast an actress called Jodie Turner-Smith as Anne Boleyn. I don't agree with the casting. Unfortunately, this means, and I'm just going to have to preface this with this comment. I am not the isolist. Right, now that's out of the way. Because, <laughs> yeah, again, this you've probably seen why I don't really want to talk about this, because this is just absolutely infuriating seeing the reaction to it. I mean, I'll put up there some um, stupid comments from Twitter, because oh, if, if you want to become a YouTuber, rule number one, um, don't engage with Twitter too much. It's like, you don't want to end up with some of like these people. I mean, there's one comment here on Twitter. If you're offended by Jodie Turner-Smith playing Anne Boleyn, shut the fuck up. Admit you're a racist and try and get even a one thousandth of the talent of this Jodie. The problem that is, though, is that you've cast a black actress as Anne Boleyn, a white, aristocrat, well, noble, based and royal lady, at a time when the English aristocracy is all white, and that's how it was. I think it was um, the Yorkshire hit, uh, Yorkshire's Hidden History. She um, pointed out on Twitter with the, um, the Sanderton... I've not watched Sanderton, so I've, I've heard bad things about it on that front, but pointing out it's a bit weird having black nobility at a time when the English nobility is still actually engaged in the slave trade. <laughs> and, and that's in the 1830s. Obviously this is before them, but it is very jarring when you're trying to convey that this is a time period that's not equal, it's not diverse, and they're trying to say, oh, we want to make this diverse. It's like, well, if you truly were caring about diversity, why didn't you pick 
I'd, okay, on the top of my head, the uh, the mildest war in Sudan. You could give a more balanced view of that, maybe. You know, that involves Britain. You can have you know, the British on one side and the mildest forces on the other, and you know, and then obviously the Egyptians and so on. But no, they don't do that. They decide to, again, I, I think, controversial opinion, I think Channel 5 is simply doing this for drama. So they can, you know, all these headlines and people like me making videos, <laughs> and then, you know, controversy, and they're hoping people will watch it. Always makes me want to not watch it. Uh, well, there was a there's a lot of these stupid uh, comments. What, what were the other ones? Uh, there was because um, like, most of the arguments in defence of Jodie Turner Smith as casting involve basically calling you a racist. Um, <laughs> people like uh, whereas there's like all those freaking out about Anne Boleyn being played by a black woman, remarkably quiet every time Jesus is played by a white man. Which is like so we're going back to Jesus Christ, a, a figure we know a lot less about than Anne Boleyn. Um, and at this point, it's almost a mythical figure. And to be fair, I'm pretty sure hasn't the BBC already done a drama where he was cast um, with more regionally appropriate casting. I did people complain? I mean, some probably did. I probably wouldn't have done. So <laughs> don't know if that's all about. <laughs> oh, what was the stupidest take I saw? As someone who spent a huge portion of their life researching and learning about the Tudors, I must say this: good. We have seen Amblin played a million times. Well, we haven't. I know you're being hyperbolic. Change things up a bit, otherwise it's boring. Just like so, we've now boiled it down to skin color. You know, it's boring unless she's what? Oh God! I'm sorry if I'm not explaining this very well because I'm more just flabbergasted that people like this exist who think we have to purposely keep changing things to make it less boring. It's like the history is fine on its own, and authenticity is important in that. You're trying to convey that we're in this time period, and it is very jarring when you see something like this. So, I'm going to move away from this topic. I think, again, apologies, I've not explained myself very well. I will probably do a rant video when it comes out, but for now I'm just going to say I'm not... Probably what's actually annoying me more is is what this is going to be about, because apparently they're describing it as a psychological thriller, delving deeper into Anne Boleyn's immense strengths whilst examining her fatal weaknesses and vulnerabilities. <laughs> right. And then... This is the producers saying, We feel that history has sidelined the voice of this ambitious queen in favour of the men who brought her down. <sighs> Have we? I seem to remember actually most dramas about the Tudors always focus on Anne Boleyn, to the point that Henry VIII's ministers are almost just relegated to being the person who gets rid of her. Have we ever already had a Tudor drama where we look at, you know, look, I think it was maybe Crom, you know, we've had Wolf Hall for Cromwell. Cardinal Wolf, Cardinal Wolf, he's he always just there just as tagged on, you know, at the beginning as. as Henry's minister who fails to get rid of Anne. Uh, fails to get rid of Catherine of Aragon, beg pardon. If any, yeah, I, I don't know. And the fact that it's described as a psychological thriller, I'm just like, okay, that's sounding a bit strange. <laughs> we can, psycholo was he going to be, is, we, is this uh, Henry going to be um, Freddy Krueger? <laughs> and the fact about the Channel 5, who um not really done period dramas at all, the, as the closest they had to this topic was a um, drama, dark, drama documentary they did a few years ago on Henry VIII and the Six Wives, and it looked really inaccurate. I've got to pull up a screenshot on this, at this point showing uh, how they betrayed Catherine Howard, um, and are described her as a prostitute, which is like, okay, that's good, you know, girl who was sexually abused when she was about 12. Well done, Channel 5. <laughs> so, yeah, so... Apologies I've not gone too detail into this. I might have to... Once we've got some info, maybe I might do another video. We'll see. For now, though, um, the coming Elizabeth is looking a little more promising at the moment, but we've got to see how the plot goes. I have no hope for this Anne Boleyn drama. Anyway, um, so hopefully I'll uh, see you all soon. In the meantime, this has been The Laughing Cavalier, wishing you a good day.